All right, let's get started. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, everyone attending today. Um, so appreciate you carving out uh, some of your valuable time uh, for us. Um, I hope and trust that you will find or count this as a good investment of your time. My name is Sean. Um, I'm the owner of RSA Solutions and uh, happy to be your host today. Um, as you probably know, since you registered, today's webcast will be featuring uh, one of our core uh, software technologies to the woodworking industry production coach. And so um, always at any time, if you don't get the information that you need, reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, Want to uh, get to as much information as we can to, to help you make good decisions about your business. But I think it's worthy of at least making sure that you understand some of the other educational opportunities that you have available to you easily. Uh, you might notice uh, my screen is actually displaying the homepage of our website, rsasolutions.com. And um, as a result of that, you'll see that there's a streaming banner, but the thing that I wanna point you to is the educational, the upcoming educational opportunities that you also have in front of you. Uh, you can count on if you're coming to our website uh, to easily be able to see those things um, that are available to you at uh, literally any moment. So today, uh, 12th of January, at this point, we're doing the Production Coach webcast. Then on Wednesday the 19th, we will have a webcast of a new technology we're unveiling to the market called Project. And it's about uh, project management uh, start to front. And then on the 26th, we will have a webcast featuring our planning assistant for those that need help uh, with managing uh, production schedules and all kinds of incredible insights to help you get the most from your factory. And then on February 2nd, uh, another relatively new product to the industry, Planity, um, a highly connected uh, purchasing and uh, inventory control connected to QuickBooks. So those are just some opportunities that are in front of you. Um, I would also suggest that while you're here on our homepage, scroll down a little bit, and this will kind of help you understand from a, um, I, I think give you a realistic view of most of the things that we help our customers with, at least from a categorical, uh, standpoint. So if you come here, of course, you can click on any of the arrows and learn a little bit more about them or um, just hit us up and let's spend a little bit of time uh, together for a call or a video call and learn a little bit more about your business. And, and uh, then we can better direct you to ways that we might be able to help you with improvements. So anyway, thank you for that little uh, thing. I do want to bless you back with something that you may not be aware of. Um, for those of you, I think I can't see immediately to know whether everybody's in the US uh, for this webcast, but if you are based in the, in the United States, I have something that I just wanna share with you that you might find very helpful. This was found at our website under solutions called employee retention credit. I would imagine that many on this webcast today are familiar that, that because of the pandemic, um, Congress passed what was called the CARES Act, and probably more specifically, you know that the SBA uh, regulated um, a couple of programs called, one called PPP and another called EIDL. Um, the PPP, just in case someone is not familiar, was um, an employee um, uh, payroll protection uh, program, and it was really, really popular and uh, worked out nicely so that companies got funding to keep people retained uh, while the pandemic was uh, ongoing. And so many did very well with that. It did come in the form of a loan, but as long as you uh, proved um, how you use those funds, those loans were then forgiven. A second uh, program of the SBA through the CARES Act was EIDL. And this was an SBA loan non-forgivable loan, it happened to be on a very long period of 30 years and a low rate of 3.75. But for many businesses, it really, really helped them with some significant funding for their operation while they were struggling or looking to be able to do some uh, really unique 
things in the marketplace to maybe overcome obstacles because of the pandemic. The last one is what I want to point you to that is something that is ongoing and will be ongoing for at least the next couple of years, but you don't want to wait until you're last in line because programs with the government can always end, especially with different administrations or Congress. And so I want to encourage you for this. So what is the ERC program? It is the third leg of the CARES Act. And the thing that makes it worthy of me talking to you about today is that your bank can't help you with this, like maybe they did with PPP, and your accountant can't help you like maybe they did with EIDL. Um, it really is a sophisticated um, program that means that you need some specialized help to get the maximum benefit. But what can you get? You can get up to $26,000 per W-2 employee. And what's special about it is the requirements for qualifying are not the same as PPP or EIDL, and in some cases required you to have done less business and a number of things. This can be supply chain disruptions. This can be you being shut down or limited in any kind of ways or restrictions uh, that might have kept you from doing meetings or travel or whatever. And so there, there's a lot of ways to qualify. So if you scroll down on this page, you'll see that it says, um, ERC self-qualify. You just press the self-qualify today button and do your best to answer yes to whatever questions that you can. And then there's a team in the background that has a very automated system for being able to help you through the process of how you can qualify to get up to $26,000 uh, per employee. So I just wanted to let you know that this is uh, something that's available. Frankly, most companies that I talk to either have never heard about it or if they did hear about it and ask their CPA, their CPA told them that they wouldn't qualify because they just can't understand the complexity between accounting and payroll, and it's like 200 pages of uh, tax law. So anyway, if you need some assistance or want to be able to uh, get the $26,000, by the way, it's not a loan, and you get it, and it also does not have restrictions on how you use it within your business. So anyway, I hope that that's a blessing to you today. Okay, I believe that now you have a view of uh, my uh, screen, a little PowerPoint on. I wanna tell you just a few things that also will be exciting. Uh, when you do come to our, our webpage, um, you will also see not only a webcast um, that are available, but soon we will be publishing also uh, factory tour stops that we're gonna be doing throughout uh, the United States. Um, even though we're still dealing with uh, some uh, effects of the coronavirus, uh, we certainly have uh, some doors being opened so that we will uh, be able to display wonderful technologies like Production Coach in real world environments. So that will be uh, definitely good. Um, today, we're gonna cover some things that I think that will um, um, be important for you, challenges that customers or companies are facing, um, how you can automate some of your processes, how you can increase throughput without additional labor, how you can improve communications uh, throughout uh, your company, um, how to automate things like uh, sorting, assembly, and shipping, um, how you can be 100% accurate um, at shipping so that we're not spending uh, costly time and money in uh, chasing down things that uh, might not have delivered properly, and then how to track work orders um, in real time. So what are some of the challenges that have been uh, going on for the last couple of years or at least 18 months that we've been facing? Uh, for a lot of companies, they're too busy. A symptom of that is often uh, working in your business instead of on your business. So I wanna congratulate you today just by carving out this small period of time for the webcast. It shows that you are looking to figure out how to work on your business um, so that we can do better business into the future. Um, for many, their employees, um, they are facing employee challenges, uh, finding workers, retaining workers, a whole new uh, workforce that's coming at us, dealing with maybe even a generation of people that are different than we are. For some of us older in the uh, business, uh, people that may have grown up with technology in their hands and may need some 
um, different motivation to want to come and be a part of your organization and participate in ways that they could really bless. And so Production Coach can help with all of these things. Uh, shipping errors, this is a, a really, really big one. I wanna take just a moment and paint a mental image for you if I could. Um, one time I was at a business meeting in Quebec, Canada, and the presenter had a giant whiteboard that was completely blank. And so when he came uh, to begin his uh, talk, what he did is used a dry erase marker to write a dollar sign um, on the whiteboard. And he said to everyone in the room, by the way, this is really profound. He drew one dollar sign and said to everybody in the room, this is what it costs when you discover or make a mistake at the estimation level. Below that, he made two dollar signs and he said, friends, this is what it costs when you make or discover an error at, in the engineering process. And below that, he made three dollar signs and he said, this is what it costs when you make or discover an error at the manufacturing process. And finally, he made a number uh, of dollar signs greater than the um, ones above it and said, friends, this is what it costs when you discover an error or, or a mistake at the customer site. And so if we can prevent those things, um, we can uh, protect a lot more of our profit. Inflation. Um, <laughs> We have definitely seen that in our industry, and there are some things that are even outside of our control um, that can be eating away at our profits. So that means when it's out of our control, we have to be even more um, careful and more uh, intentional about uh, protecting profits in ways that we can control. So Production Coach can help us with those things for sure. Uh, deadlines. I hear this often from customers, not only bid deadlines, but also um, just uh, often being the last one in um, uh, in a construction site uh, that you have very little time uh, to be able to meet these needs. So being able to streamline it to be able to uh, make production flow in the most effective way possible is a really big deal. Um, also, I don't believe that I have ever surveyed a company that would give themselves a 10 out of 10 for communication. Um, sometimes we go to uh, great lengths to try to provide a huge amounts of information, maybe in the form of work orders or packets or those kind of things, thinking that there's no way that we could be missing information. However, um, it's not the case. There's always uh, ways to be able to communicate together and Production Coach has a number of features to help us just do that not only internally in office and office to factory, but also office and factory to the job site. So those things can be a huge help. Um, I covered the mistakes uh, and errors kind of uh, together, so I'm not gonna go into big detail on that, but I do wanna take a minute and I wanna cover for you what is it that we call intelligent data management. And this really for, I, I would guess that many of you on this webcast today are already utilizing part labels in some fashion and may already have a barcode on your label. If you don't already, don't count yourself out from this. There, there's ways that we can help you overcome a number of those, but that's really what we're doing is extending the value of that barcode that served a nice purpose at first operation, whether the panel saw an to base machine, label the parts, and so maybe your barcode is to scan at a you know, horizontal bore and down insertion or vertical machining center or something else, but we can help you do so much more uh, with that barcode, including, you know, tracking and sorting and kitting and staging and shipping. So this is intelligent. Next on your screen, what you should see is an example of a part label. Um, this certainly does not have to be the configuration of your label, but for those that may not be familiar, uh, labels, uh, part labels can be used to provide uh, great information and communication of a number of things. You'll see that not only does this label have a barcode, which means the unique identification of that particular part, but it can also have a part description. It can, talk, it can provide information about size, about material information, 
what job or work order that it belongs to, what parent or product that it belongs to. Even uh, in some cases, companies have images of parts and can even display edge banding. So that's just a good example of a part label. So what are some things that you can do easily with Production Coach to get more value from your barcode? So you can literally on screen be able to view the size and material information, see the machining details, change the status of a part. Uh, for example, maybe I wanna know that it's been completed at edge banding or wh whatever status that you might want to update. Um, you might be able to, or you could create a damaged part alert that can automatically send a signal uh, to whatever uh, station that you might want to alert them that a, a, an anomaly has happened. We have a damaged part. Um, you can see a product related information. You could generate a product label that we would use then downstream for things like staging and shipping and even a job site. You could uh, scan a barcode and include um, items within a kit. You could scan a barcode and automatically sort by which parent or cabinet assembly that it belongs to. Um, you could group it um, just by scanning. For example, coming off of um, the panel saw, um, if I scanned a barcode, it could tell me how to group it, for example, by a like part type, maybe sides versus in, or excuse me, sides versus shells or backs or however you might want to do it. You could group it by material. Um, you could group it uh, by edge band. You could group it by work order. So there's a number of things that we can help you with grouping functions as well. On your screen now is a, a display of a product label. This one is pretty plain, only carrying a bit of information for it. We can see that we have the PM004 the work order name, we have the unique ID now for the assembly um, of it. We see the description of the particular assembly and open base and we see its size, but it can contain um, a lot of other information on this product label as well. Um, here's also a couple of examples of uh, what we think of as kit labels um, or what we might think of as grouping management. And so here, we have uh, two examples. One would be loose items, things that were not gonna be part of assembly. Um, for many of our customers, they don't assemble adjustable shelves, but might be scanning um, off of edge banding or last operation, parts onto a pallet, um, wrap those up, click one button, and now generate a kit barcode for that entire pallet so that when you scan the one barcode onto the truck, it's counting all of those items that were scanned onto it. So in this uh, top example, you would see that that one barcode can represent 12 individual shells. Uh, in the below section, this is an example of palletization. Um, so for some of our customers, they will, after assembling a cabinet, they will scan it onto a pallet along with other uh, cabinets or assemblies. And when they have stacked the pallet, they will then click one button to generate a barcode for the pallet itself. And so that's just a couple more examples of how you can use the barcode. So what are some things you can do by scanning a product barcode? Well, you could change the status of the product. For example, I might wanna know that it was assembled, or I might wanna know that it's been moved to a, a staging location. You could include it in a kit, just like we covered uh, maybe on a pallet. Um, you could create a damaged product alert. You could stage it into a warehouse location. You could scan it onto a truck. You could change the status of a kit. You could load the kit um, onto the truck. You could scan a work order barcode itself to uh, initiate that a particular uh, process has been started. So for example, in some cases, it may not be convenient to utilize a barcode. Let's take finishing, for example. Um, I don't want to have a barcode um, on my items to be finished because that barcode would need to come off and be cleaned off all the residue to finish. And so we can also have barcodes for our work orders. And so we can have a barcode started and completed to know that those operations were done. I just want to take a couple more minutes before we move into the software uh, portion of this itself. Um, this um, particular 3D factory image is also found um, on our webpage under Solutions Production Coach. 
and you'll see that the, there is a, a direct link to this 3D image of a factory. So this is what the picture I want to paint for you and I want for you uh, to be thinking about how this relates to your factory. Number one on the screen is meant to depict the office itself. And so generally production coaches used in the office uh, for a variety of things. Those might include importing the data from leading CAD CAM systems. Uh, production coaches, of course, um, deeply connected with popular software systems such as Cabinet Vision, um, such as Microvellum, such as WoodCAD CAM, EMOS, uh, Mosaic, and others. Um, also, if you don't have any of those on the list, we can help you in other ways. So don't exclude yourself and we'll help you uh, get the data. Uh, into the system for sure. Um, other things other than importing that you might want to do, you might want to attach uh, documents that can be available on demand at any station. You might want to create packing lists uh, so that we know what's supposed to be going on to the truck. And then maybe you would even be uh, receiving back and managing damage part alerts as well. Number two is meant to depict that for a lot of companies, um, they care about being able to track production and for sure, um, a great number of our customers want to know when a work order has started and or completed at first operation in their factory. Um, so here we've got kind of a, an image of a, a nested base machine or panel saw or combinations of, of, of those kind of things that makes it possible to be able to know uh, precisely that information. But number two also can be used any place in your factory where you want to be able to have a scan of a work order, a scan of a pattern, or a scan of a part in order to update its status uh, to whatever you might want to label that status change to be. Number three is also meant to um, show you or present that you don't have to have production coach at every single operation in your factory. Only those places where you care about doing functions such as scanning to find out information or to be able to pull up online documents or to report damaged parts. And so you can um, relatively decide exactly where you want to have production code stations and what you want them to do. Number four is to depict a really powerful uh, feature of uh, production code called sorting. Um, here in number four, it's meant to depict that you could literally scan a part barcode and it organize uh, or tell you which bin to place the part in to match up for all of the assemblies. Um, let me pause here for a moment to say that it seems that at least on average, uh, companies tend to batch work orders into 30 to 40 cabinets. Uh, just to avoid argument, let's use an average mean of 35 cabinets. And for simple math, let's say that we have 10 parts per cabinet. That means that a work order might have 350 parts flowing through panel processing, uh, probably in some, you know, hopefully streamlined kind of a way, but certainly we wouldn't want to keep them grouped at that point by cabinet. That would be too inefficient. However, we come to a point pre-assembly to where simply by scanning a part barcode, we can have all of that organization done and not only have them sorted by cabinet, but know if anything is missing, deal with any problems. It really is amazing technology. And what that ensures is that when it comes to assembly, we never start building something that we don't have all of the parts. Number five is to depict that 3D assembly. So literally by pulling parts from the sorting bin, scanning any one of those parts um, at assembly, it will automatically generate a three-dimensional live view of the object that you're building and it gives you full control to be able to see inside of it, below it, behind it, whatever you might need to be able to do. Um, and also at that station can automatically trigger to generate a product label uh, generated by production coach and change the status of that item so that in the system we know instantly that that product has been built. And so that works out good. So now we have a product label uh, to be able to do things further in the factory. Number six is to depict that for some of our customers, they don't have the luxury of going directly onto the truck. Sometimes work orders need to be staged, not only 
uh, the cabinets themselves, but possibly other items. Maybe we have trim packages, uh, hardware bags, uh, custom items, whatever that is. And so you can stage and have confidence to know that you have uh, brought together all the things that you need for a work order. And then number seven is to depict um, that um, we can help you at uh, the shipping dock uh, by scanning uh, products um, or kits onto the truck. Um, we can ensure that we never close the truck door without having 100% accurate shipments. The system will even alert you if you're trying to scan something that doesn't belong as part of the packing list. So that's a huge one. I very seldom interview a company that doesn't tell me that they have issues with getting it right 100% of the time. And so, man, if we can avoid getting it to the job site, remember those dollar signs. Um, this is a great place to uh, protect the back door and make sure that we are shipping 100% uh, accurate. Number eight is the final one I'll cover today. And, and by the way, this is a 10,000 foot overview. There's a ton of things that Production Coach can do for your factory. The best thing that I think you can do for yourself is to raise your hand and say, hey, I want to have a, a consult. Let's, let's get together on phone or web and let's really talk about the kind of uh, challenges that you're experiencing and the ways that we can help. And we'll put together a great plan of how this could work in your factory. But number eight is meant to depict the job site itself. And so here um, we have the ability uh, to be able to bring that communication uh, not only from office to factory, but now all the way to the job site so that you could manage things like deliveries and or installs, whether that's updating status, whether that's capturing job site uh, information uh, and updates, all of those things are available uh, with this amazing technology. So I'm going to open up uh, the technology, the software itself. Give me just a second. Here. I'm going to fire up um, Production Coach. Sure didn't get behind me. By the way, I failed to mention something earlier that I want to draw your attention to. Um, just because you're on um, mute doesn't mean that we don't want your feedback. So please don't hesitate to use the questions section of the uh, docking station, and uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. So you'll see that in my setup, I have a number of logins. Of course, normally you wouldn't do this all from one uh, computer, but for the sake of the webcast, it makes it uh, um, nice that I can show you all the way through. So I'm going to click on the office um, station to be able to open up, and we will now see that we have uh, Production Coach open. And so what do we see uh, once we come to this screen? Um, on the left-hand side would be the work orders that are in the system. So if I click on one, we see that it's then displaying in the middle upper section all of the assemblies and in the lower section all of the loose items makes it really easy for uh, someone uh, to, to easily be able to select on a work order and know everything that needs to happen uh, with this. And so that works out um, really good. Um, there's, there's a number of ways that I could describe the screen, but I think that the best thing that we can do for today is to actually bring in a new order. So I'm going to select a work order called PM004, and I'm going to tell this that I want it to import in the system. So you'll see exactly what buttons you would have to push in order to be able to get the data into um, your system. Um, normally, um, this takes just a, a few seconds, and then we have a huge amount of data available. So we can see that it's here. Again, in the upper section, this is all the assemblies. And then I also configured my system, and you can configure yours how you want, to be able to separate the adjustable shells from all of the assemblies. And so in this case, um, I think that, that, that uh, you would have a clear view that if you've got uh, – a software system, we're able to connect to it, click a button, and now you have all the data available for factory use as well. 
If we look at the buttons on the screen, we'll see that we have one for work order status. And so here, even though we have not yet made any progress on this work order, we can see that the system was smart and that it calculated the total steps or processes that we needed to go through to complete the work order. And it also was smart that it utilized um, easy to configure routing functions to be able to know what parts were supposed to go through what stations and then once they became assemblies. And so we can see exactly what it is that we have uh, to do in front of us. As we move through the demonstration itself, um, we will get a clearer picture of how we're progressing. I'm also gonna select um, on the documents. I know for a lot of you, you're printing out a ton of stuff for work orders. Uh, Production Coach enables you to move to more of a, a paperless or a digital uh, modern kind of a factory. So here's just an example of a document attached to a work order for easy access. Of course, there's chat functions uh, and a number of other things that are available, but one I wanna get to specifically today is to be able to create a packing list. And so here I have available uh, to me by clicking the plus symbol that I see that I could uh, add a, a work order uh, to this. So I could select the entire work order or I also have the ability to manage this so that I could select or unselect any items that I want included or not included. And I can even do that across multiple uh, work orders. The reason I mention that is that for some of our customers, especially um, either larger reg residential projects or commercial projects may break up uh, and have multiple work orders for, for a job site uh, that they're going to. So they might actually need to be able to include uh, things from other work orders and we manage all of that um, for you in a really great way. So we're gonna add and say, we have now created a packing list and we'll use that a little bit later when we make it to the shipping station itself. So I'm gonna close this for just a moment. And while we're here, what I wanna do is I wanna update the status of something manually. And I'm gonna tell this that I wanna change the status from ready for production to panel processing, just so that you can see what that does when we actually select on the progress. So of course I did that manually because we don't have time today and I don't have a CNC router or panel saw in front of me, but if we would have been working our way through that by scanning uh, patterns or parts or work order barcodes, that kind of stuff, we would be uh, updating to a system and that's what we wanna know, right? We are completed and done at first operation. So we completed a, 163 parts in this. And you'll see that the system is reflecting this and letting me know that we haven't started on the other operations. Uh, we're at 0% on those, but we're 100% on the first operation. I'm gonna open up another instance of uh, Production Coach. Letting this fire up, um, you know, not a good idea in real world to have uh, application upon application open, but for this purpose, we'll, we'll uh, hopefully be able to make some good progress. I want to take you to a station here called Sorting. So now we have Sorting um, that is opened up, and I'm on this work order PM004 and I'm gonna click on the icon that is gonna take me to a sorting screen. And this looks a little bit different uh, maybe than what you were expecting, but it's a really uh, amazing uh, screen um, that we can have for this. And what it's done is that I've configured my system to be able to utilize mobile uh, sorting carts. And so what we're assuming at this stage is not only did we do first operation, but we've been through edge banning, horizontal boring, whatever it was that we needed to do. And so now um, we have parts that are ready to be scanned and organized by product. And so what I'm gonna do first is I've got my barcode scanner and I'm gonna scan a barcode. And the first message that it's going to display for me is to go get a particular uh, sorting cart. Here it told me to go get rack A. This happened to be a small work order that only had 10 products in it. However, if we go back to our mean of 35 cabinets, it would have given me a different message that would have been 
go get racks A, B, and C or ADF or whatever was required in order to be able to sort all of the items. So as soon as I select and say, okay, I now have that rack, it's displaying for me which bin that I want to place that first part in. And so it's flashing a number seven. What I'm gonna do is scan another, and you'll see that now it's telling me to put this part in bin number five. I'm gonna continue scanning a few more. Okay, um, I don't want to bore us to death with scanning way too many things, so I only scanned enough parts to be able to get one of the bins complete. I can easily tell without any training, uh, just from the legend itself, um, what's going on with the bins. Um, we can see that it would be orange if we had a damaged part. It would be red um, for the assigned bin for that part, which it flashed each time. Uh, the gray tells me that they're an available bin that I haven't used. Green tells me that it's ready, that it has all of its parts. And blue tells me that it's assigned a bin and it's in progress of, um, of collecting parts before it could turn green. And then yellow tells me that it's a part in progress. So that would mean that, for example, that it was a damaged part and correction is being made and it's making its way back to the factory. So I know it's being managed and I can anticipate it. So we didn't scan enough to have everything. So let's go look into one of the bins that don't have everything. And I'll just select here on this three drawer. So now I can look at this and say, show me which parts are inside of the bin. Show me which ones are missing. Maybe I've got an anomaly, like maybe a label fell off of a part. I can tell it's a left side. It might go to this, but I need more information. I can just click a button. Now I see its size information. I see the product that it goes to. I can tell by the drilling pattern. Yes, this is a three uh, drawer cabinet or I can see by materials. And so I could even automatically, or I could sort this manually without even going back and reprinting a barcode. Maybe I have another anomaly that I can see that this part bottom shelf has been damaged. I could click a button and I could give it a reason. By the way, these are your definable reasons. And so now I can create an alert in the system, uh, which will be something that we'll uh, deal with. Here comes an alert uh, that is popping up and saying, hey, PM004 work order has something damaged. What was the reason? It was damaged by edge banding at a date and timestamp. It was reported by the station sorting. If I wanted to see more details about it, I could easily see all of those details. And now I could tell it that I'm making a correction for it. And so maybe I want to tell it, hey, you know what? Um, this has now been corrected. I'm sending it back out uh, through panel processing. So now that error uh, goes away in display as well. And now what we see is that we actually jump two statuses that that bin number eight went from orange to now yellow because now that part is in progress. So a lot of amazing, amazing uh, tools that we have here available at our fingertip. And if we go look at the status of what we're doing so far, we'll now see that we're 100% completed at panel processing and 7% completed here at sorting. And I can always click into any one of these and see further details about what has been done and completed as well. So really powerful to be able to know uh, the status at any point uh, that you'd like. I'm gonna open up another station. And this time I'm gonna open up assembly. So if we keep in mind that we had one bin, bin number seven that had all of its parts, and so we're ready to start building. The nice thing about this is we don't have to wait till everything has been sorted to start building. So now we can start building earlier, right? So that makes sense that we could get a running uh, start on that. And so what do I want to do at assembly? Well, I want to scan a barcode of one of those parts that I pull from bin number seven. I just scanned the barcode. And now my screen is automatically changing to the 3D assembly screen. So now I can see that I have the 3D product. I have the part that I scanned 
highlighted in red. If I wanted to see a different part highlighted, I could select on it on screen and know where it's at. Um, I have the ability uh, to be able to control the model. For example, I can see below it, I can see behind it, whatever it is I might need to do. I even have the ability uh, to be able to hide things. For example, if I wanted to see inside of this, I could uh, tell it that I wanna hide a door, whatever I might wanna do. So now I know all of the parts, I know all of the assemblies or fronts and drawers, and I know all the hardware I need to build this. And if we'll notice, the status has changed to assemble. And so we're making progress as we're moving through this process. I'm building it, it's updated, I've generated the product label, it's been uh, status updated, and so let's go look at it from this standpoint, and now we'll see that we have completed 10% of our assembled items as well. So we've made some really, really good progress as we have made our, our way through this. And of course, we have the ability, uh, once we're uh, beginning to create assemblies and stuff, to be able to deal with staging and to organize how and where in our factory that we might choose for this work order to be being staged. So I could select on any one of these and say, hey, I've got PM004 now that I'm beginning to um, uh, stage to this particular location. So everybody knows where this work order is being accumulated in order to prepare for shipping. I'm gonna open up one more time if I'm not overreaching by having way too many applications um, open. And um, we will move to the shipping station itself. So here we are at shipping. Now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to open up the packing list that was actually created earlier by the office. And so when I open up, just click on the truck icon, I'll maximize this and so now we'll see that we have a work order. So what are we gonna do with this? I'm gonna scan a part barcode, excuse me, I'm gonna scan a barcode of an item that I want onto the truck. There we go. So now in the system, we have the ability to display whether we just want to see what we have uh, done, um, whether we want to be able to show what's not shipped, what has been shipped, or to be able to see everything. And so we're able to work right along with this. And so you can display, you know, do I want this uh, organized so it's at the top, it's at the bottom, however I want it. So I'm gonna scan another. So now it's giving me a positive affirmation. I'm scanning another product on and another and another and another. Now, here's what I want you to get. If this makes sense, it also prevents you from scanning, prevents you from scanning the wrong thing. I'm gonna scan a barcode that is not part of this, is not part of this packing slip. And so it is indeed showing me exactly how I can ship uh, accurately. So we can see everything that we have shipped. We can see uh, items that are not yet shipped. And so we can have 100% confidence before we close the truck door that we have everything that we need. And we also have the ability, of course, in this case, to be able to generate a report. For example, maybe I wanna have a, a packing list that is uh, uh, displaying accurately with date and timestamps um, precisely what has been shipped. So now the report has been generated and we'll see that we have all of these items. And we'll see in this case that we ship six items and we have 22 that are still uh, not yet scanned. We'll see the date and time stamp. And so that takes you through kind of a, a really nice uh, view of some of the features of Production Coach. When we do these webcasts, um, you would imagine we've got to keep them rather generic. Um, I, I prefer so much if you've seen even a little bit of something that you like, that you reach out to us and let us do a little uh, a phone or web or in-person consult with you and talk about a variety of ways that we can help you um, in the process of this. Um, I do wanna go and look to see if we might have any questions 
uh, that have been asked. Um, I, I definitely uh, intend for this to be a um, educational, uh, you know, for it to have benefit for you to um, hopefully get something from it today. But don't don't uh, shut the door and say, oh, that's not exactly how we do it. That's not going to work for us. I challenge you, reach out to us and say, hey, you know what? I want to talk about my factory. Here's my challenges. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm struggling. I, I've got all these things working really great, but I need help with this and this. We can do that. It's extremely modular. It's extremely configurable. And it's something that I'm sure we can help you with. So let me see if anybody has asked any questions yet. And if you haven't, this is my cue to you to say, hey, great opportunity for you to just go click on the question section and to be able to ask a question uh, about something. And we'll uh, hopefully uh, get it covered today. And if we don't, uh, we'll reach out to you after the webcast and make sure that you're getting the answers you need to be able to improve your business. Okay, <laughs> I always get this, how much? Um, so how do I see this? Um, Production Coach is highly modular. Um, it's really configurable, so there's not really a one size fits all. Um, you can start off really small and really basic, or you can do a, a huge number of things. We recommend starting with what we call our new customer bundle. What it includes is a license for the office, an import to your CAD CAM, and four stations out in the factory. And so generally, uh, when we start with those, it would, and if we go to the end of process, we would say shipping is consuming one of them. So now we've used two. Um, assembly is generally one of those, so we would call it three. Sorting is generally one of those, so we would call it four. And then the fifth one um, could be used at first operation or maybe in custom area. Again, it's easily expandable after it's been integrated. And so that's just so that I can answer the question, you know, like how much is it? It ranges hugely, but a new customer bundle is uh, well under $30,000. And so I hope that that helps you. Most of our customers, uh, would uh, maybe all, would attest to you that the return on investment is super fast. I don't think I've ever interviewed anybody that didn't claim that they had a 100% return on investment within six months. So let's let's talk about it and figure out and we'll prove to you how we can help you get a great um, ROI for the investment. Um, what's the question? Okay, is it, okay, no, it's not a SaaS model. Um, I know that that's kind of popular in some kind of a products. In this case, there is a price um, that, that you would have. We would uh, quote for you, not only the software, um, we would also quote for you the services that you need uh, to be able to implement this, this successfully, as well as your first year annual support and unlimited upgrades during that time. And of course, you can then decide if you want to renew it after. So what's not included, what's not included is we don't supply the hardware, meaning the PCs, the scanners, the printers, that kind of stuff, but we guide you easily in how you can acquire them online without a whole lot of effort. Um, we don't do the IT side of it, meaning that you'll need to connect those to your um, network. And uh, then we're ready to help you with both online um, services and uh, then on site for integration. Uh, the only other thing that it doesn't include is the technicians travel um, expenses, you know, their flight, rental car, per diem kind of things, no big deal. Um, so a couple of questions there about pricing. What else do we have? Um, finishing. Okay, so you can't, and this is a good one. So there are some processes that don't lend themselves easily to barcode. And one of those happens to be um, finishing. So let's say that I were going to uh, produce uh, some raised panel doors. Well, I'm uh, going through the mill and maybe I am you know, uh, ripping first, maybe I'm molding, maybe I'm cross-cutting, um, then I might be doing some glue up, and then I might be trying to assemble the door, and then I'm gonna have to sand the door, profile the door, sand the door, and then eventually finish the door. And so in, in that entire uh, situation, it wasn't really convenient um, for 
um, for labeling to happen at the part level. And so we can definitely help you with that uh, strategy. Either we can have a printed sheet of barcodes or you can actually scan a work order level barcode to let um, a process know that it has begun or has been finished. So that's uh, hopefully a good example. I think there is is really one of those that it's like, instead of saying, nah, this won't work for me, uh, be sure to uh, reach out to us and let's talk through the challenges you're facing and we'll make sure that those things happen. Um, custom. Yeah, I think this is a good question. Um, let me summarize this. Um, so to be generic about this, um, yeah, great. Uh, see how production coach can help me with my production cabinets, but how's it going to help me with one-offs? So let's say that uh, maybe you need to build range hoods. Um, maybe you need to build custom die walls, uh, wall panel systems, whatever it is. So no, you don't need barcodes for the individual items, but it might be good to have a production code station to where you could be interacting with the system to let it know, have I started working on this custom item? Where am I in progress? And then allow the system not only to update that it's been completed, but to then generate a barcode, just like we would do at assembly. So then it could be scanned into a staging area or onto the truck as part of the packing list itself. Um, yeah, um, so um, this is not a, a complete list of what we're connected to, um, but from a CAD CAM side, um, we are connected to um, Cabinet Vision, to Microvellum, to Mosaic, to WoodCAD CAM, to EMOS, and then we have a, a variety of other connections that just don't include the 3D assembly. Um, Production Coach is also connected to uh, Planning Assistant for those that might want uh, to have a, an incredible piece of software um, for helping them uh, back schedule and to manage um, their uh, production load compared to their capacity and or uh, uh, production goals themselves. So that's really powerful. And it's also can be connected to Planity, uh, which can automate processes of purchasing an inventory connected to QuickBooks. So you would imagine at RSA Solutions when we add uh, technologies into the fold. The intent is for those to have interconnectability. We don't want to have to uh, have islands of information uh, where we can't uh, really do great things. Um, lead time. Um, this is a this is a, a tough one uh, for me to answer because it's really dependent also upon you. Now, let me first answer this by describing our processes. Um, if we choose production coach and we say, hey, we want to do this, we've signed off on a proposal, we've made payment. By the way, there's a variety of uh, simple uh, payment methods that we can help you with. Uh, but once we have a firm order in place, um, first you're assigned a project manager. The manager is going to send you a welcome letter and ask to schedule an initial uh, call and review with you online. Uh, which will go into deeper detail about the sales order and make sure that your objectives are matching with what's been turned in so that we have our um, opportunity to catch at first uh, glance if there's anything uh, that we need to deal with that maybe uh, there's a misunderstanding or we, we're thinking uh, something different so that gets covered from a nice technical way so we never have to worry. And uh, from there, the project manager develops what's called a project plan and submits to you. And once you've reviewed and um, accepted the project plan, uh, then we're really waiting on you to verify for us that you have the hardware in place and connected to your network. Uh, when that has been done, a technician is assigned to come online with you to install first the open SQL database and then to install the application on each of the PCs um, uh, where Production Coach will reside. And once we have done that and verified the hardware and done some uh, testing uh, remotely, then we schedule to come on site and to be able to complete your integration, to train all of the affected users for it and to run live production with you, expecting that we will sign off while we are on site 
you know, we are really running production. So we go as fast as we can. Of course, schedules and load have an impact, but in most cases, we try to make it so the ball's in the customer's court. And so um, sooner you can get the order in, sooner that you can get through the project plan sign up, the sooner that you can get hardware in and connected, the sooner we can go. Uh, believe me, we want the story of, man, I bought this, I, it integrated super fast, super smooth, and now it's a wonderful thing. We would like to make you so successful that you want to be one of those on our 2022 factory tour um, that we're doing across the United States. So with that said, um, if I didn't get to every question, um, we will definitely circle back and get it, uh, uh, your questions answered. Uh, we ran out of time for today. I hope and trust that this was a good investment of your time. I, I so much appreciate you attending today's webcast and please consider um, other educational opportunities that you have by visiting our website at um, rsasolutions.com. And so with that, again, my name is Sean. Uh, I'm the owner of RSA Solutions and it's just my pleasure to be able to help you. And if you need anything, man, click on our website and just click connect and uh, we'll get together and uh, figure out how uh, we can help you um, make 2022 the best year yet for your business. So again, thank you. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time.